Today we're going to be going through a few of what I believe to be some of the hardest A-level questions. Now without further ado, let's get straight into it. So in this first question, it's uh, made up of multiple parts. We're going to do part A first. It gets harder later on. So for this question anyway, in part A, we have a curve C and it has parametric equations x equals 3 plus 2 sine t and y equals 4 plus 2 cos 2t. And we are told to show that all points on this curve C satisfy this equation right here. Now, how can we do this? Simple. All we need to do is sub in, instead of x here, we sub in this. And then if the points on C satisfy this, so if our answer is right, then we expect this whole term y to be equal to this. So let's just work that out and work that out and show that it is true. So we have y equals 6 minus and then we put x but instead of x we put 3 plus 2 sine t because of this and then we're taking away 3 because of this equation here so and we're squaring all that you can see the threes cancel out so now we're left with 6 minus 2 sine t all squared so 6 minus 4 sine squared t <clears throat> now if you look at this it's not in the form we want because y is equal to this so we just got to prove that these two are actually the same thing so let's now what we want to do is find a way to link sine squared and cos of 2t now th there is actually a formula for this so remember the double angle formula for cos so cos 2t is equivalent to cos squared t minus sine squared t now we can actually write this just in terms of sine squared t because if we look at this in a look at this identity cos squared t plus sine squared t is equal to 1 we can rearrange it to give us cos squared t is equal to 1 minus sine squared t so we can sub this into here so we are going to get cos of 2t is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared t. Now, if we just rearrange that, we are going to get sine squared of t is just a half minus a half of cos 2t. So if I just rub out this extra information we have here, we have this identity which we can use. So we just plug that straight into here, and then we get 6 minus 4 lots of this. And then if we just expand that out, we're going to get 6 minus 2, so 4. And then we have plus 2 cos 2t. And that is indeed equal to y, so that is proven. We have just shown what we wanted. Okay, in this next part of the question, we are asked to first sketch this curve C and then to explain why C does not include all of the points of this Cartesian equation. Now, this point where it's saying why it does not include all the points, it's actually giving us a clue as to how our sketch should, should be. This is where many people made a mistake in the exam. They drew the whole of this curve when you actually don't. Now, the reason is because if you look at how a thingy parametric equation is made, it's dictated by the value of range of t values. And as you can see in this, t goes from 0 to 2 pi. So based on that, the x and the y will have minimum and maximum points. Because if you look at the x, for example, what dictates the value of x? The th it's 3 plus 2 sine t. So the sine t is what's dependent on t. Now, the minimum value of this is going to be when sine t is equal to minus 1. So the minimum value of x is going to be 3 plus minus 2. So it's the minimum value of x is going to be 1. Now, similarly, we can find the maximum value of x and then the minimum of y and max of y. So this is going to help when we sketch and when we explain why it doesn't include the whole curve. So if we go about sketching our curve, let's first just put a marker for where the max and minimum value of x is going to be. So as we said, x is going to range. The minimum value is going to be 1 because sine t is equal to minus 1 there. So 1 here, and then the max value we said is going to be when sine t is equal to 1. So when we have 5. So now what we can do is find out what the y values are going to be at x equals 1 and minus 5. 
So we just sub that into this equation right here. So if we sub in one, we're gonna get y equals two. I'll just point that, plot that here. When we have five, we're also gonna get y equals two. Now, if you look at this equation, it's a negative quadratic, so it's gonna have this sort of shape. So we can just join up these points with sort of shape like this. Now, remember, we know the maximum value of y, so we can actually place it here because the maximum value of y is going to be when cos t is equal to 1. So we have 4 plus 2. So here's going to be our max point, which is just touching here. So this is basically a rough sketch of c. So we can also put for the x value, I just forgot, this maximum occurs when this part is equal to 0. So we have 3 here for the maximum point. Now, answering part B, it's basically what we've already said. So why it does not include all the points? Well, that is because this is our range of T values. So X is just going to be between 1 and 5. So it's not the whole curve. So basically, it's just that explanation. Maybe you could put a few more words around it, but that's basically all there is to it. Okay, so in this final part of the question, this is the hardest part. And we are told that the line with equation x plus y equals k, where k is a content, constant, intersects c at two distinct points. Now, immediately when I see two distinct points, I think of discriminants. And in particular, b squared minus 4ac will be greater than zero because we have two roots. And then we are told to find the range of values of k, giving our answer in set notation form. So how can we find our range of k values? Well, first, let's think about this graphically. Now, I've drawn our sketch just to the corner here just to illustrate what we are actually trying to find. So we have a line equation, which is y equals minus x plus k. So I've just rearranged this a bit. So what is this uh, line equation looking like? Well, it's a straight line with a negative gradient and we want it to intersect C at two points. Now, what are the pos what are the only ways that this can happen? Well, this can only happen in between these values if you just look carefully. So the minimum value we can have is here where it's touching this point and then the maximum value of k is when it's right up here so it's not intersecting one time here rather it's just to the side and it's intersecting twice so when we do the discriminant we're gonna find this range no actually when we do the discriminant we're getting what k will have to be less than so we're actually gonna find this upper dotted line but we can find this dotted line because we know that it goes through this point. And what is this point's coordinates? It's 2, 5. So let's find the minimum value of k first. So all we need to do is sub x equals 2 and y equals 5 into our straight line equation. So we have 2 plus 5 is equal to k. So k is going to be greater than or equal to 7 because it can be equal to 7 because it's still going to intersect twice. Now, to find the other bound of k, we have to do discriminants, like I said. So, we have uh, simultaneous equations here. We have this and this. So, what I'm going to do is, yeah, I'll leave it like this. So, we have y equals minus x plus k, and we'll just sub that into here. So, we have minus x plus k is equal to 6 minus x minus 3 all squared. Now, we just expand these brackets and collect like terms so we have on this side so we have minus x squared and then plus 6x remember this minus is flipping all the signs and then we have plus 9 becomes minus 9 and we have 6 minus 9 so it's minus 3 now if we bring the x squared and everything to one side we are going to get x squared minus 7x plus k plus 3 is equal to 0 now, I'm putting this in brackets because when we use the discriminant, we need to remember this is our C value. This is our B and this is our A. So A is 1, B is minus 7 and C is K plus 3. 
So we just now use this discriminant equation. So we have b squared, which is 49 minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, k plus 3. And that's greater than 0. Now we can just simplify this a bit. We're going to get 49 minus 4k minus 12 is greater than 0. So if we bring our 4k to this side, we are left with 37 is greater than 4k. So 37 over 4, k is less than 37 over 4. So that's the maximum value of k. Now we can just get to our final answer because we have this bound and this one for k. So if we just combine them in set notation, we have k is an element of, so that's saying the range of values it takes, and its minimum value is 7, and it can be equal to 7. So it goes from 7 all the way to 37 over 4. But it can't be equal to 37 over 4, so it's an open bracket. So that's our final answer there. In this next question, we have one of these modeling ones which people tend to struggle on as it's quite hard as there's not really a specific method to follow all the time. But let's try and answer this question anyway. So we are told that a spherical min of radius 5 millimeters is placed in the mouth and sucked. Four minutes later, the radius is now 3 millimeters. And in a simple model, the rate of decrease of this radius of min is inversely proportional to the square of the radius. And we are told to find an equation linking the radius of the min and the time. And it says you should define the variables that you use. So before we get started, let's just do write that and define the variables. So let's call R radius of mint in millimeters, just to be extra sure we're getting that mark. And T is time in seconds, I believe it is, or in minutes. So time in, yeah, we could say minutes. Now, you could say seconds, but you just got to be careful what you plug into your formulas later on then. We're going to use minutes because this question is talking about minutes. But you can put seconds as long as your formula is consistent with it. So now, let's get to actually forming the model. So we are told the rate of decrease of the radius of the min. So the rate of decrease of the radius... Rate means it's by time and the radius is here. So that's just dr by dt. So it's, that is what this is equal to. And because this is a decrease, it's going to be a negative value. See, it's decreased. So we put a negative here. And this is inversely proportional to the square of the radius. So if it's inversely proportional, it's going to be some constant over the square of the radius. So this is our first formula. Now, what we can do here is just solve this because notice if we bring the r to this side and the dt to here, we can just end up with this. So we can integrate both sides. So on this side, we get a third r cubed. And on this side, we have, because this is just a constant as there's no t here, so minus kt plus c, constant of integration. Now, this is the point where we use this initial information. So initially, the radius is 5. So when t equals 0, radius is equal to 5. We can use this to first find c. So let's plug in t equals 0. So this term is going to go away. And r equals 5. So we have a third 5 cubed equal to c. This is going to give us c as just 125 over 3. So now our form, uh, yes, no, now our equation is starting to look a bit more complete. So we have a third r cubed is equal to minus kt plus 125 over 3. Now we can use a second piece of information. Four minutes later, the radius is 3 millimeters. So when t equals 4, r equals 3. We sub this in again. A third 3 cubed is equal to minus 4k plus 125 over 3. If we just rearrange this, then we are going to get k as minus 49 over 6. So our final answer is, no, sorry, k is going to be 49 over 6. 
And our final answer is just going to be a third r cubed is equal to minus 49 over 6t plus 125 over 3. So that's just our final formula. Now we could simplify this, but it's fine to just leave it as that. In this final question, we have parametric equations again. So x equals sine 2 theta and y equals cosec cubed theta. And then we are told to find first dy by dx in terms of theta. Now for this question, we need to remember the formula for finding dy by dx in when we have parametric differentiation. So that is just dy by d theta divided by dx over d theta. So we're just going to compute these two values from here and then divide them by each other because this is equal to dy by dx. So let's do the easy one first, dx by d theta. We just differentiate this normally. So this 2 gets multiplied to the front and then sine differentiates to cosine. So we have two lots of cos 2 theta. Then for dy by d theta, we use the chain rule. So we have cosec and that is all being cubed. Now remember for the chain rule, what we do first is multiply the power to the front then multiply by the derivative of this inside term. So we can just look at our formula book for what cosec differentiates to, and that is minus cosec cot. And then in this brackets, what we do is just reduce the power by one. So we have cosec theta squared. So now if we just simplify this, we have this equal to minus three lots of cosec cube theta cot theta. Now remember to get dy by dx, just divide them. So our final answer is just going to be minus 3 cosec, let me write this rightly, cosec cubed cot theta, all divided by 2 cos 2 theta, and that's our final answer. Now for this second part of the question, we are told to find the exa exact value of the gradient of the tangent to C at the point where y equals 8. So how do we find the tangent? Well, we just sub in into our dy by dx at that point. But our dy by dx is in terms of theta, and we currently have y. So we need to find theta based on when y is equal to 8. So we set y equals to 8 here and solve this. So we have a is equal to cosec cubed. Now I'm going to write cosec as 1 over sine because that's how we go about solving it. So it's 1 over sine cubed theta. Now if we rearrange this, we're going to get sine cubed theta is equal to an eighth. So we cube root both sides and we get sine theta is equal to a half, which means theta is just going to be pi over 6 within this range. So once we found our theta, all we do is plug that into dy by dx. So this is when theta equals pi over 6. So what we're going to do, because we want our exact value, we're not just going to put it all in our calculator at once because it won't give it exact value. We're going to calculate it step by step. So we have minus 3, and that's been multiplied by cosec cubed of theta. So I'm going to write cosec as 1 over sine again, and theta is pi over 6, remember? That's been multiplied by cot, which is 1 over tan. I'm going to write it like that again. And that's all being divided by 2 lots of cos 2 theta, so pi over 3. And if we put each of these values into our calculator, we're going to get minus 3 times this term is just 8. This next term is root 3. And then we have divided by 2 times a half. So these two cancel each other out. Then we're just left with our final answer as minus 24 root 3. And that's our final answer.